food. It nourishes and sustains us. Whether for necessity or enjoyment, we all must eat to stay alive. But what do we expect from our food? What criteria must it fulfill? It must be the expected colour and odour and meet our expectations for taste. It must be safe to eat, contain no toxins, harmful bacteria or foreign matter. It's not always possible or convenient to have supplies of fresh foods available. Frozen foods allow us to eat a wide variety of foods all year round. Freezing maintains the appearance and taste, but if not handled safely and correctly, it can become unsafe to eat. That's because all foods contain bacteria, and plenty of them too. For instance, that chicken you take home in your shopping basket, it contains hundreds of millions of bacteria, all living and many potentially dangerous. Dangerous, that is, if the bacteria get a chance to grow. And to grow, they need just three things, nutrients, water, and the correct temperature. Then they grow like crazy. Take a look. Now, all foods contain nutrients. That's why we eat them, right? And plenty of water, too. So, our most potent control against the bacteria is temperature. You know, when you heat food, you kill bacteria. Our milk is heated, pasteurized, to kill 99.9% .9 of the bacteria. The survivors, well, you control those. You keep the milk in the fridge. Frozen foods, the next logical step Water changed to ice. Now there's no chance the bacteria can grow. When you cook the frozen food, you kill all the bacteria. Simple, safe. But don't be fooled. When you thaw frozen food, the bacteria really start motoring again, spoiling it, maybe make it unsafe. So, to keep frozen food safe, maintain strict temperature control. Temperature control begins with the processor. The raw product must be cleaned, processed and frozen as quickly as possible to maintain both product freshness and quality. And once frozen at the prescribed temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius or lower, then the product must be kept at that temperature. Any fluctuation of temperature can severely damage the product's quality and substantially shorten the product's storage lifetime. Sufficient cold air circulation within the freezer is essential for correct non-fluctuating product temperature. Well, it's cold. It's dry, too. There's no water in here, just ice. And we want to keep it that way if we can, because any warm, moist air that comes into the freezer pushes the temperature up just slightly. May not seem much, but those slight temperature fluctuations actually draw moisture out of the food. Let's have a look around. Yeah, some of that ice has actually been drawn out of the food, and if that process goes on too long, the food's going to taste tough, dry, and stringy. So we try and minimize temperature fluctuations. Like this, for example. These plastic strips greatly reduce the leakage of hot air into the freezer. Freezers, whether they're large commercial freezers like this one or the small chest freezer like you've got in your kitchen, have been designed for one purpose, that is to store frozen food. 
They're not designed to freeze fresh food. Two frozen fish, they look the same to you? Well, they're a little bit different. This one, we snap froze in a commercial freezer. And this one, we froze in a domestic freezer, so it froze very slowly. Well, let's thaw them and see what kind of product we're going to get to eat. As our fish have thawed, they've lost moisture. We call it drip. We can collect the drip and measure it. A quick frozen fish lost a small amount of drip. That's good. But this slowly frozen fish, it's lost a lot of drip. Now that's juiciness, succulence, food value that you've lost. It's gone. Slow freezing of fresh or pre-chilled food will result in moisture loss and poor product quality when finally consumed. Pre-chilled food such as meat should be stored in the refrigerator, where it will keep for three to five days. Food for the freezer should always be wrapped in a freezer bag. This keeps the food from drying out and the cooked product will then be much juicier. Wrapping and packaging is also necessary for commercial operations. Wrap products keep much better because of less moisture loss and the packaging protects the frozen product. rough or careless handling of the frozen product can cause costly damage. Temperature control is most important during the transportation of frozen goods. Quick loading of pre-cooled insulated containers minimizes the time a product spends without refrigeration. Wherever possible, shipping containers' refrigeration motors should be activated so the temperature inside the container is minus 15 degrees Celsius or lower. Partial thawing of food and then refreezing leads to very poor eating quality and sometimes to wasted, unusable products. Frozen food that has been unprotected in the boot of a car for more than half an hour or so has begun to thaw. And for home shopping, it's a great idea to protect your frozen food purchases with an insulated bag or a box, just like this. Then it's just a matter of when you get home, popping the frozen packages out of the chest and into your freezer. In the distribution and transportation of frozen food, care must be taken to maintain the quality of the frozen products. Handling time from freezer to refrigerated van must be kept to a minimum, and that means moving the food from the freezer and straight into a pre-cooled insulated van. And as in the freezer itself, products must be stacked within the van to ensure adequate air circulation and they must be held at a temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius or lower during the transportation and delivery. Delivery vans and trucks must be kept clean and in top working condition at all times. Repeated opening of the refrigerated compartment doors during delivery can cause considerable temperature fluctuation. 
All delivery vehicles must have a sufficient refrigerating capacity to quickly bring the inside temperature of the vehicle back to the minus 15 degree minimum after each door opening. When the frozen products arrive at their place of use, whether it is commercial or home kitchen, it's important to remember that freezing has laid dormant the food bacteria. But as soon as products begin to thaw, the bacteria begins to grow and multiply at an alarming rate. Thawing in a chill room or refrigerator is by far the safest method. Or if a chicken is needed in a hurry, it can be safely thawed under cold running water. Thawing of any frozen product at room temperature is an invitation for food contamination and possible food poisoning. Correct thawing of frozen foods means safe eating and good eating. A freezer cabinet, just like the one in your supermarket or corner store. It's been designed to keep frozen foods deep frozen. So naturally, you don't locate it near a heat source like a rotisserie unit or where the sun can fall on it. You know hot air rises? Well, cold air sinks, and that's how this works. The frozen foods are located deep in the cabinet where they're bathed in currents of very, very cold air. How cold? Well, let's check with our thermoprobe. Yep, it's a good cabinet. That, that's a good frozen food storage temperature. This is important. That's the load line. Above that line, even by a centimetre or two, the air's much warmer. Some things are standing up a bit. Look at this ice cream. That's a bit high and... Yep, it's thawed. It shouldn't be up there. It's losing quality. And these peas are high also. You can feel they've thawed a bit. Now they've refrozen and they're lumpy. They're not flowing freely. Most frozen food packages have a use by date displayed on the package. This information is for the consumer's protection, so it pays to be aware. Packets that have ice on or within the packet have been partially thawed and refrozen. Don't buy these products as the eating quality will be poor, as it is with all refrozen foods. The key to safe frozen food handling is to maintain the cold chain from production right through to consumption, and that means strict temperature control. Sure, you need some technology like a well-designed freezer plant with plenty of refrigeration capacity, but you also need common sense, like stacking the food correctly and not leaving the freezer door open and not leaving frozen food in the boot of your car while you go shopping all afternoon. You know, good frozen food handling eliminates costly spoilage and waste and it greatly reduces the risk of food poisoning from contaminated foods. It really does make good, plain common sense.